This is the main part of the presentation. This covers dielectric response methods and Omicron's new Dirana testing system. But first, a brief look at the history of these methods. Already in the 1960s, dissipation factor measurements were applied to identify the quality of dielectric measurements. This measurement method is limited to a certain narrow frequency range, for example, to power frequency. At that time, there was no reliable method for on-site moisture diagnostics. There was only the old approach, which used equilibrium diagrams. For this reason, RVM, recovery voltage methods, came onto the market in the early 1990s. Soon, users questioned the reliability of RVM, and this provided the motivation to develop new methods. New methods including the PDC method, polarization and depolarization current measurement. This method is now around 10 years old. Another approach called FDS, frequency domain spectroscopy, was brought into the market. Both instruments were developed at the same time. Recently, in 2007, the new dielectric response analyzer, Dirana, was launched by Omicron. It combines the advantages of both older methods, PDC and FDS, and offers an advanced interpretation algorithm. At this point, it is important to emphasize that dielectric response analysis has a great advantage as it identifies the level of moisture content. Moisture content is a measure that can be compared to other methods, like for example, the equilibrium approach. It is not a new parameter like polarization index, abbreviated to PI, but an independent measure which has a true physical meaning. It is the actual water content. How is the dielectric response measured? Firstly, all high voltage bushings are connected to each other, as are all low voltage bushings. Then the measurement voltage is applied to the high voltage bushings and the current flowing back from the low voltage bushings is measured. It is very important to use a guard because of the very low currents flowing through the main insulation, which are in the range of micro, nano or pico amperes. Any disturbance from outside must be prevented and to achieve this, the guard is connected to the tank of the transformer. A measurement of the return voltage in time domain is called the recovery voltage method, or RVM. A measurement of the currents in time domain is the polarization depolarization current method, PDC. A measurement of the dissipation factor in the frequency domain is called frequency domain spectroscopy, or FDS. Finally, the new instrument, Dirana, combines time domain measurement, PDC, and frequency domain spectroscopy, FDS, in order to combine the advantages of both. Let us have a closer look at exactly what is measured. The measurement voltage is applied to the high voltage winding. The main insulation of a power transformer, as situated between the HV and LV windings, has the shape of a cylinder. In order to measure its dielectric properties, the current flowing from the high voltage winding to the low voltage winding is measured. Two physical properties influence the measurement, the conductivity of cellulose and oil, and interfacial polarization. Interfacial polarization is a process where the charge carriers of oil travel towards the opposite electrode and form a charge cloud at a press board barrier. This forming of a charge cloud can be measured externally as a polarization effect. Thus, interfacial polarization is the polarization on the interfaces of different materials, in this case, oil and press board. Various effects influence the interfacial polarization and temperature. The construction of the insulation system as the insulation geometry, the insulation temperature, moisture content, and also conductive aging byproducts. These byproducts, such as acids, also have an influence on the measurement. This slide shows how these different physical properties are superimposed onto the dielectric response, which is measured. The diagrams display dissipation factor via a wide frequency range down to 0.1 millihertz. Only the press board exhibits a particular shape of dissipation factor against frequency. Only the dissipation factor of oil follows a straight line against frequency. Since the insulation consists of oil and press board, the superposition of both, together with interfacial polarization, gives this typical shape of dissipation factor against frequency. 
This S shape is how most of the curves look when measured at a transformer. An increasing water content or higher degree of aging byproducts will cause the curve to shift towards higher frequencies. However, the shapes will remain very similar. Temperature, shown here at 50 degrees Celsius, will additionally shift the curve to the right-hand side and also increase the losses. All the various effects, such as temperature, moisture, aging products, and geometry, affect the shape of the curves. However, it is still an S-shaped curve shifting to the right-hand side at higher temperatures and higher moisture contents. This slide explains frequency domain spectroscopy. Voltages and currents are measured in the frequency domain and from the phase shift between them, capacitances and losses are derived. A capacitance is divided into a real part and a loss part. The ratio of loss part to real part of capacitance gives the dissipation factor, or DF. The scientifically agreed interpretation of the curve of dissipation factor versus frequency is as follows. Oil conductivity influences the middle area having a steep gradient. High oil conductivity shifts this area of the curve to the right-hand side. At low oil conductivity, it shifts to the left-hand side. Moisture content and aging influence especially the low frequency part and only a little bit the high frequency part. Thus, a high moisture content increases the low frequency part of the dissipation factor curve. Insulation geometry, that is the ratio of oil to press board, especially influences this local maximum of the curve, the hump. A high amount of oil results in a high hump. A small amount of oil decreases its size. By this interpretation scheme, it is possible to differentiate between the different properties influencing the dielectric response.